Welcome back to the Fullerton College Printing Technology Department's Combined Pre-Press Class Lecture on PIA's Pre-Press Trainees Manual, Section 2.1. In this video, we're going to explore the measurements, points, and picas that define type and page layout in traditional printing. And we're also going to look at the anatomy of a printed page sheet. So let's start here with what's the point? Whoops, I'm on the wrong page. What's Let's start here with what's the point? A point is 1 72nd of an inch. If there are any nerdy model builders out there like me, raise your hands. 1 72nd is a good scale to work in. But anyways, uh, 1 72nd of an inch sounds kind of arbitrary, doesn't it? Why would you need 72 of something to equal one inch? That's a strange number. We'll talk about that in a minute, but that's what a point is. So when you see a point size for a font on a computer, it's not something based off the computer. It's not a pixel. It has nothing to do with your screen resolution. A point is an actual physical real world measurement and 72 of them make an inch. So 72 point font should be an inch tall. When we get into picas in a second, we'll talk about the why of these numbers. Picas are 12 points or one sixth of an inch. So six picas makes one inch. 12 points makes one pica. Uh, picas are used for page measurements traditionally. Uh, this has to do with some interesting things here. I actually kind of like them. They're a little bit hard to work with if you're not used to them. And I don't really use them that often because I'm so used to working with clients who have no idea what it is. But I don't necessarily like having to translate normal uh, standard measurements into picas in my head, which I can do, but it makes it a little bit harder to discuss projects with people rather than just thinking the way they do a little bit. Uh, that's a personal choice. I don't know if it's the right choice. It's worked so far. Anyways, so why on earth would you use something that there are 12? Why would you want a sixth of an inch as a, as a size? Why would you care about points as being a 72nd? The best answer I can give you is because that lets you divide by more numbers. Numbers like 12 and 72 allow you to divide by both two and three and four. I know I said both, that's three things, but you're able to divide by two, you're able to divide by three, and you're able to divide by four easily, which means if you're dividing a page into multiple columns and you're trying to do it in normal inches, normal inch measurements use uh, halves, quarters, eighths, sixteenths. So you're always dividing by two. So it's a very base two type system. But if you're able to use a number like 72 as your base number instead of, you know, two, you're able to divide multiple ways and get evenly spaced, evenly sized columns, even with even divided, yeah, even put down into thirds. Anyways, moving on. Basic page terminology. This is just an orientation to what the different parts of your page are going to look like uh, when you create them and how spreads look like in uh, pre-printed press sheets. Let's go here and take a look. First off, there's this diagram. I like the older words verso and recto as the left and right hand pages. They sound really cool. They're from the early days of book bindery and book arts in the uh, late Renaissance and the early 1500s in Italy, uh, specifically in like Venice and Florence where all the good art was happening and all the good printing was happening right around then. So, so a lot of print terminology comes from there. Anyways, you have the head trim, which is where you chop off the top of your page. Uh, I should actually start with basic orientation. So in this diagram, the green, the blue, rectangle around the outside edge is obviously, hopefully, not part of the page. The outside gray line represents the edge of the sheet of paper printed on. All the other lines inside show the different elements. So A is the top of the page that gets cut off. G is the bottom of the page that gets cut off, the head and the foot trim. H is called the face trim and it's on two spots because it folds at K. So this is actually two page, two sheets, or sorry, one sheet folded in half makes four pages in a book signature. So we'll be able to uh, see this in person at some point. I'll at least put up a video of folding it. But if you fold a single sheet in half, a paper in half, you end up with four pages. So the face trim is both outer edges together when folded. The face margin is the space between that and your text. The gutter margin is the distance between your page elements and the fold. There's a header space at the top, there's footer spaces at the bottom. Let's move on and see how we do here. So the footer, these are things at the bottom of the page. The header is things at the top of the head page. Head, foot, 
not too hard to remember, I don't think. The body of the page is the main part where the, the body of text would be. I know I'm using very circular language there. The gutter is a space between columns of type or between multiple objects. So gutter is empty space between things. It's also the space between the elements you want to print on your page and where it folds in the middle. Uh, would you want to take care not to use unless you're doing it very intentionally because you can lose things if they go into that fold. Head and foot, top and bottom again. The face is the outside of the page. Sometimes it's also known as the thumb edge because if you read a book, that's the part where you use your thumb to kind of flip through the pages when you're opening up a book to read. Margin. <clears throat> Margin is empty space, white space, negative space. Call it what you will, but call it margin because that's its real name. Uh, margins are the empty space around things that you're not going to use. Margins are important. I know I just said in my other video that margins are not important in InDesign, but what I mean by that is margins are non-constraining in InDesign. Margins are important. People cannot read page edge to page edge. That's really fatiguing on the eye and hard to do. You need blank paper to be able to read. Just as music is painted on silence, so printing exists on a blank page. You need the blank space. The, the space between letters and between words is just as important as the space within them. So the top is at the top, the bottom's at the bottom, the face margin is along the uh, face or thumb edge and the gutter, gutter margin is how much space you allow for the fold to happen. The margin is consistent, it's just where it's located. Ooh, the trim. The trim is the spot you're gonna cut. Uh, I often use trim marks when I'm making output PDFs like we did in our first project. Those trim marks show the person in binary where to cut. Sure, you may have someone really good like my old coworker Artin who is about the most accurate cutter I've ever met, but it doesn't mean you should make his job hard. You should take advantage of the fact that he's good and make it easy so you get perfection out of him. That's how that works. The trim size, this is an important one, guys. The trim size is actually the finished size of the book or the document that you're making. The trim size is how big is your page. The, for instance, a trim size of a postcard is either six inches by four inches or five inches by seven inches, sometimes a little bit bigger. The trim size of a trifold brochure is eight and a half by 11 inches, and then you fold it after that. So it's the final cut size. The head trim, foot trim, and face trim are the spots where you cut. It takes three cuts to cut a book down or a magazine because once you fold it in half, you only have to cut the bo bottom, top, and face. The fold takes care of the other edge. This has been a basic introduction to terminology around uh, print pages and press sheets, and a little bit about why we use points and picas and how they connect to normal measurements that we're used to. I should also mention that the literal rest of the world, literally everywhere but here, doesn't need points or picas because they measure everything, that's right, in metric. So hope you've enjoyed this. This was uh, section 2.1 and uh, stay tuned for more as we carry on this semester. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye for now.